Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another workout. And yes, this week was a deload week, so the max effort stuff isn't up here. So we're going straight to speed work, and today was dynamic effort squat and deadlift day. Um, today I decided the more I'm looking at my waves of stuff, I think I'm going to keep weight somewhat constant and increase band tension through the waves. And I know it's a different way to do things, but I feel like I'm faster, more explosive doing that. So as people can see, that's a lot of band tension for my speed boxes. You know, and I kept only 225 on the bar. Next week, we'll go to a different bar. So the way we're going to do the waves for the squat and the bench press, I think, now that I found weights that I can accelerate fast out of the bottom, uh, we're going to just use those weights. And each week in the wave, we will increase the band tension you know, a good 15 pounds or so, 10 to 15 pounds, depending upon which lift it is. So for those curious, what does that mean? Well, it meant week one of this wave is 100 pounds of bands. Week two is 115 pounds of bands. Today is 130 pounds of band tension. And so again, it'll be five by five with this. And so we'll increase band tension and then we'll rotate bars every three weeks in the wave and then reset the band tension each time. Uh, so that again, we do everything sequentially and focus upon the speed and because what I want is I want my max days to be more and more maximum strength based and I want my speed days to be more and more dynamic based and so I'm separating everything out further into that uh, also for those curious yes I do have my boxes and farmers walk sandals um, not sure how soon any of that will be implemented on camera but I have to put my box together so I want to do some box jumps and stuff maybe later today start messing with them but my box isn't built. I have a wooden plyo box that I have to assemble that is rated to handle a pretty good amount of weight. So I want to start my box jumps on my speed day. And then I have my farmer's walk handles. For those curious, I got the little Titan ones that are compact so I can use them inside my condo, which means that hallway is going to be cleared out. So you see that chest of drawers I just have sitting right there in the hallway. That's going to have to go. You can see it on the edge of the screen there because I'm going to want to incorporate more and more weighted carries and again actually doing plyometric work. So the plyometric work will count towards this dynamic stuff and I feel like it'll it'll help me tremendously. And it's, it's not just me saying that. There's a lot of really good coaches out there. Not just even the West Side conjugate type guys but other people. I mean guys like uh, Chad Wesley Smith who, you know, juggernaut juggernaut training systems, right? I, th I think we could all argue that he's more than a competent coach, right? Strength and conditioning coach. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone is going to disagree with that fact. He believes uh, in box jumps or improving your squat. He believes in it. So kind of the whole point with where I'm going with my training more and more but people need to understand, yes, I'm doing this for powerlifting. So sometimes my lifts are going to be very powerlifting specific, and people should grasp that. That is my goal. My goal is to get back into powerlifting at a serious competitive level again. Right? I'm not going to make any qualms about that. Hopefully it's obvious at this point. I still consider myself a powerlifter, even though I haven't competed in a few years. And I'm training to compete again. But with a lot of these other endeavors, it needs to be a case of me being a strength athlete who happens to specialize in squat, bench, and deadlift. As opposed to just purely a power lifter. And, and I think that's the direction I want to go for my overall fitness and, and health and athleticism. And that means we're going to continue to get leaner. And I think I'll start leaning out more once I start doing all the farmer's walks. Especially doing this lower carb diet. Um that by default will start leaning me out further. Uh, and again, I've got to remind people, I get people who come in here who are new to the channel or they haven't been here in a while. They're like, oh man, like you really need to rip down. It's like, guys, I don't promote people getting ripped. Yes, I will get leaner. From an athletic perspective, I need to be a bit leaner than I am now, right? No one's going to debate that. It would benefit me as an athlete to get leaner. However, that doesn't mean I'm going to do some sort of deep cut. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to try to rip 20 pounds off in three months. I have to be able to perform better. So any fat loss is going to need to be slow. But from a health and fitness perspective, I don't need to lose a single drop of fat. We all know where I'm at. We've seen DEXA scans. Uh, in fact, we all know my visceral fat is almost non-existent. So that's kind of the other thing, too, that comes up. People are like, oh, you're sucking in your gut. You've seen my visceral fat scans. You guys have seen the inside of my body. I don't have a gut. I have 
subcutaneous fat. I don't store fat inside my gut, right? We can see clearly where all my body fat is. You guys have seen scans of my body. You've seen my bone density. You've seen where every drop of fat is on my entire body, internally. I don't have any in my gut. It is insanely low. I'm way, way below average even for my, my body fat percentage in terms of what I have inside my stomach. It's way below average. I don't have any. I don't have a gut. I have fat around my waist. I have loose skin and I have fat in my love handle area. A little bit of fat stuck in that loose skin on the front. I have fat on my butt. I mean, I've got fat, right? I'm not ripped. But it's not in the gut. I don't have any in there. It's literally just a few ounces. I don't even have a pound of it inside there. Nowhere near. And that's based upon scans. You guys have seen it, measured it. So... There's nothing there to suck in. So, you know, what you see on the outside is what I have, and it's visible. So from a health perspective, uh, I'm pretty well in inside of the ideal health range. Now, if I lost 10 pounds of fat, would I still be inside the ideal health range? Absolutely. Hey, I want to make that clear. It is not unhealthy for me to lose 10 pounds of body fat. It just probably won't improve my health any. It will make me a better athlete because I'll have 10 pounds less body fat for a weight class. So let's, we need to make that clear. Uh, but the conditioning will probably help with that, especially with the way that I eat these days. Probably lean out a bit from it as I ramp it up because uh, that conditioning matters. Those farmer's walks are really going to add multiple endeavors. They're going to improve my conditioning, which will improve athleticism. They'll work on my grip strength or good core exercise. Right? It's a real good lift to work in. I think it'll do a lot for me. I think it'll do a lot for me, both from a, a athletic perspective uh, and a health perspective and everything else. And I think it will improve my big lifts. So we're absolutely going to do them. We're going to do them religiously. Just needed the proper equipment. You know, had to find a way to make it happen. And I did. So I've got them ordered. They're here. Actually, you can probably see one of them over in the back corner. You see one of the handles over by the, the dip station? That's one of them sitting back there. But I've got to put the box together. And the same thing, the box jumps will help with my, my squatting. Right? And will help me be more athletic. Because that's the goal, is to be more athletic. Be an athlete who happens to specialize in the power lifts. Uh, which, again, that's the direction I want to go. And that's the direction I've been working towards, but I've had to implement each of these things one at a time. Right? one at a time about an 18 year old kid I can't make 17 changes at once <laughs> uh, speed pulls today I did 15 I do up to 20 but my thumbs were a little bit of an issue because that skin that I tore last week a little bit isn't fully healed and so I probably before it tears again I need to sand it down and then let it heal over the weekend so I'm gonna I'm gonna knock just the extra edges of it down because I noticed I was worried about it re-tearing started seeing it around rep 13 or 14 so I got to 15 I'm like okay that's good I would have liked to have done 20 but 15 gives me the training response I want with the speed pulse uh, for those curious you can't see the smaller plate on the side but it's not a lot of weight but I'm using 150 pounds of band tension uh, I'll mess around a little bit more with these of, of rotating band tensions but it may not be necessary because I'm rotating the squats first these can stay fairly constant and I'll probably just run on this percentages of the weight because uh, we're getting a fair amount of training volume. And since I only did 15 of these, I went ahead and added one set to the good morning so that we get more effective reps, right? Because if I got all 20 of these, I, I feel like three good sets of banded good mornings is enough to get me inside of my ideal training volume. But because I stopped at 15, that means we lost five quality reps. So therefore, we needed to get a set real close to a limit set to get four or five quality reps for most of the same muscles, right? So if grips becomes ever a limiting factor, you can always fill in that training volume with good mornings. Pro tip right there. Because it's a similar movement pattern. We're working all the muscles. You can, build a, you can build a deadlift off of good mornings if you really want to. And if you think about it, what lifts carry over to my deadlifts? My box squats? my rows and my good mornings, they all contribute to the deadlift. They all contribute to the deadlift because I want my deadlift to get back up. I want a big deadlift. 
the deadlift matters to me more than any other lift. It's just that I know that my squat will come up from all the box squatting and stuff also, but the box squatting carries over to the deadlift. I mean, for me, that's really where I want to be the best at. I really want that good deadlift. So my speed days are going to be a little more geared towards that, a little more deadlift volume than squat volume, and I'll put more effort into squatting stuff on max days. That's why I'm doing the split squats. Um, but that's why they'll always, I'll keep adding more and more good mornings, and we'll always try to get more total sets of, of speed work on the deadlift and the squat. Another reason I'm doing so many good mornings, because they can help with the, the squat, absolutely, but they carry over to the deadlift even more. Because that's where I want to put more of my focus. I know that's what's going to bring you the most to the table for me. Not that I won't get my squat up and my squat won't be good. I just know how much the deadlift brings. And I'm built to deadlift decently well because I have longer arms. So I think for me, more and more, people are going to notice that, yes, I'm still going to focus very heavily on squatting. I still want my squat to be really good. But if there's going to be any prioritization in my training, it, it is going to be a little bit pushed in the direction of benching, which I'm worst at, it's my worst lift, and deadlifting. Because I feel like I just I want to be better at this. That's simple. And the squat's going to come along no matter what, just because of all the box squatting and everything else I do, the squat will continue to improve. But I'm not as worried about it. So then we did my four sets of eight with banded good mornings. Now this is the same weight and bands I used last week, but it was four sets. And I might work on just adding more volume, and I'm going to continue to add more bands, but I think when I get to the point to where I can do 100 pounds of band tension, it's time to add weight. But for now on this, uh, because again, the neck position and trying to get the a little bit of overspeed eccentric, I'm going to focus more on band tension on these for now. And that's going to be the funny thing with a lot of this training. There's a lot of band work, a lot of chain work, but then I always have a, uh, accessory movements that are straight weight so that we get a balance of all of it. But straight weight stuff tend to focus upon the most important training elements, right? So if I'm doing straight weight, it's literally stuff like split squats, glute ham raises, uh, floor press, weighted dips. But, you know, we'll, you guys will see where I'm going with all that over time. Uh, but I don't have a problem with, with the correct lifts using bands and chains for lifts that are going to benefit more from it. I will. It's just it's going to be chains on max days and it's going to be bands on speed days, which I've discussed in the past why I'm doing. But it doesn't mean we cut out straight weight exercises. It's just that I pick straight weight exercises on the ones that are going to benefit most from it. Right? Lifts that really benefit from the bottom, where we are trying to get a deeper stretch and more starting strength. So again, balancing all these performance elements. Uh, so it's, it's going to be more and more in this direction. More band work on these days. More chain work on the heavy days. But it was good training. Um, I'll definitely maybe do some glute ham raises here in a bit. Uh, I will work on getting my other stuff set up and I might start messing with the box jumps and stuff today. Maybe the farmer's walks. And if not, the farmer's walks will be in full swing this weekend. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.